All right, so after this, uh, let me just give you a little bit more, more space over here. Okay, so now I'm more centralized over here. All right, what about the next assertion I would like to do? I want to do a little bit more complicated uh, dot notation, which we also did in part one, but I think it would be nice to do some uh, repetition over here. Okay, let's do the following. I want to write the following expression. How can I say I got an entry over here? I know every entry contains two parts, the serial number and also the products. And for the product itself, it also contains the model, storage, finish, and etc. right? How can I get, for example, the model of the products that's, that is stored in the entry E? Let me say that again. How can I get the model of the products that is associated with the E over here? How can I get it? I know the products should be iPad Pro 12.9. I know that. So why don't I try that first? So I say assert equals over here, right? So two parts. So this part should be the expected value. So I'm expecting iPad Pro 12.9. And this part over here, I want to get the, uh, the model of the products of the entry E, right? So E dot get products which is the reference of some product objects and dot will actually let you go to that particular object in the memory and let's say we are now in that product objects and now i want to get its model i can say get model and we have seen this complicated expression like this earlier let me remind you very quickly so i can also explain this one uh once more if you review your ipad notes from part one do you remember this notes over here? It's really important. That's why I did some illustration earlier, right? What we did before was the context object that we started with was P. P dot get model is a string. So that's why we can call a version of the equals from the string class with some string arguments. We're doing something very similar, just uh, just that the starting context object is a little bit different. Okay, let me just write it down here. Okay, so what we have now is something like this. So we have P. Oh, not P, E. We have E. Dot get products. And then dot get model. Up to now, we actually got a string value. And then what we want to do in that particular test is we, re we are really trying to compare the string value with this uh, expected value. So it's as if we're trying to call dot equals method, right? Dot equals. And then, so this will be iPad Pro 12.9. Okay, there should be some space, but I'm just writing out of space over here. Okay, so that's the uh, expression. And let's now try to understand that a little bit more carefully, right? It's really worth the time to actually understand uh, this dot notation. It's rather, diff, uh, rather complicated. You can see we got one, two, three. We got three dots, okay? I would like to start with this. Uh, remember, if you want to analyze the dot notation, always go from the left, okay? The leftmost context object that we start with is E. And what's the type for E? The type for E is entry as we declare, right? So that'll be entry. And when we say entry dot get products, that means we're gonna go to look up the address that is stored in E and then go to that memory location and then call get products on that entry objects, right? That's something I also did some similar tracing for the last video on part one. You can also review that, okay? So what's gonna happen if we, if we say get products, right? If you go back to uh, the entry class over here, and you will see uh, get products. That one is going to return a products object, right? Okay, so what's gonna happen is, let me know, just try to do this. So get products is going to be a method from the entry class. So this expression over here, e dot get products, is actually going to return some objects of type products. All right, so far so good. And then once we got a product over here, so this will be the context object that we have analyzed so far. And products dot get model 
it's gonna return what? Well, let's go back and look up. And we should really go to the product class, go to package explorer and go to products. And then we do have the get model method over here, which returns the string, right? You can see everything is logical, nothing is arbitrary. So what's gonna happen is, let me just use another color here. Okay, how about this? Okay, so what, what I'm gonna do is, okay, so up to here, get model like that. Okay, of course, like that. Okay, get model is actually a method from the products and that one's going to return a string. Okay, I'll recap in a moment. And then, of course, it might be better if, uh, yeah, I just didn't really box in a very good way, but get, uh, the box for the pink only go up to here. It does not include the uh, empty uh, parentheses over here. Just remember, okay, there's a string. And then we are calling the equals method from the string class, because we know that it's a string, right? It's re returning a string. And then we'll simply compare that with iPad Pro 12.9. Let me recap quickly. If you only look at the E over here, it's of type entry. If you look at E dot get products, it's of type products. If you look at E dot get products dot get model, it's of type string. If you look at E dot get products dot get model dot equals, that one is going to return a Boolean. So eventually, what we're going to get is we're going to get a Boolean value. Okay. So eventually, this guy over here is going to be a Boolean. Okay. So it would be more accurate that I don't actually put any semicolon over here because semicolon should be after some standalone call. Okay, just I'm just trying to be very careful. Okay. All right, so this will be uh, actually a Boolean uh, variable, a Boolean expression eventually. Okay, I hope that's clear to you, right? If you still got any doubts, feel free to ask. Let me go back to Eclipse. Oh, over here. And let me go back to test entry over here and then what we have is this assert equals, right? And, and uh, what I just wrote, you can also say assert true. And then here I can say e dot get products dot get model dot equals, and then iPad Pro 12.9. That will equal uh, that work equally well. And if I launch the uh, JUnit test. I still get a green bar. Okay, awesome. Let's now go on a little bit faster. And then uh, the next one I would like to do is the, how can I get a finish of the products of the entry? I can say assert equals over here. The expected value for, uh, for the finish should be space gray over here, right? Let me copy that so I can save some typing. Uh, sorry, copy to the wrong place. Inside the quote should be. All right, so now how can I uh, try to get that? The entry dot get products, which which will give me the products, and then got dot get finish. And you can also write the corresponding version that I put over here. You can do that too. Okay, I'll leave that to you. Okay. Notice that these two are simply equivalents, right? Assert equals. Uh, that's about finish. Let's uh, let, let me do something very similar. Let's now do try to try to get uh, storage. So I can also say assert. Uh, equals or assert true doesn't matter. I will just use one version. You can do the other version yourself. Let's say assert true over here. I can say e uh, one thousand, which is the expected value for the storage. E dot get products dot get get storage like that. Okay, assert true. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. The reason that you, uh, Java compiler would think uh, 1000 should be, uh, you can see the error message. The left hand side cannot be, uh, must be a variable, right? It's thinking that I'm doing a variable assignment, right? Because we what I really meant to write is double equal. All right, be careful. And get storage. Get storage, did I? Yes, I made a typo. All right, everything's working. Okay, good. And then after storage, let's now try to do uh, has cellular connectivity. That should also be true. Assert true over here, e dot get product. So hopefully now you have no problem of seeing this uh, dot notation. Dot has cellular connectivity. 
And the next one, what about for original price, discount value, and and price, right? Let's now do that quickly. So since they are double value floating point, so we must use assert equals with tolerance. Assert equals over here. So 1709.00 and then e dot get products, right? And we want to get its original price. Get original price and then 0 0.1, okay? And then the next one, we want to go for a get discount value. Assert equals over here. Discount value, as we said, is 220, right? Just remind yourself, 220 over here, 220.00, and then e dot get products dot get orig uh, not original discount value over here, right? Finally, we also got a get price uh, method for the products that we can assert. Assert equals over here. And then, so the value, you can uh, do the math yourself, but I can tell you it should be this value here. E dot get products, right? Dot get price, 0 0.1. And one more thing I want to uh, remind you, that may be something you have observed, but just in case you don't, I can mention that to you. You can see, let's, uh, let's, uh, for all the expressions we have done over here, right? For all the expression over here, you can see e dot products over here and e dot get products over here, e dot get products over here, right? And also for every line, whenever I say e dot get products, the common prefix, I'm really talking about the product objects that's being pointed to by some address. And the address is actually copied from the P. That, that was passed as arguments. And I will visualize that later, all right? Finally, I want to test the uh, toString method, right? Assert equals over here. And then I want to do um, the, uh, I want to do uh, two, uh, two toString methods. One is for the get products, right? So to be a little bit lazy, I'll just put empty string over here. So we can just copy and paste, right? That's uh, that's one way to, uh, in case you want to just do the uh, test yourself. But sometimes you might just be given uh, the expected value. So I would say e dot get products over here dot to string. What should that be? Okay, I just put empty string now, but I'm pretty sure that will fail. I'm expecting that to fail. So I would say run. That's uh, failing. And let me just go back to, you know what? Let me just uh, uh, maximize it. And then if I double click on this line, I will know this line is failing, but exactly how it fails is because this is expected, this is actual. So why don't we just uh, just uh, choose the whole thing? Okay, you can double click to choose it and right click and say copy. And then I can put the string over here. So this is a string I'm expecting, right? This is something you have seen from part one already. So this is a two string method for products, right? You can see we are calling the two string method from the products. More precisely, in the product class, this is where we define the two string method. This is the two string we are calling. On the other hand, okay, let me just uh, make a note over here. Testing the two string method from product class. And correspondingly, we may also want to test the two string method of the entry class. So we can say assert equals over here. And again, let me put an empty string, but I'm gonna say e dot to string only, right? This will also compile. So what it is trying to call, so which version are we, uh, which version of the, of the two string method are we calling, right? So let me just copy this and then I can change that accordingly. Okay, let me hit the line over here. And then testing the two string method from entry class. Right, because here you can see the context object of two string over here is E, as opposed to the context object for two string over here, which is E that get products. The context object here is products. The context object over here is entry. Right? So that's why I'm calling the entry version of the two string method, which is here, which will give you the serial number followed by calling implicitly the two string method of the product class, right? That's uh, what we said before, okay? And what should that be? Well, let's find out. 
if I try to run the JUnit test, I do expect it to fail because now if I double click on this line over here, I know this line is failing and exactly how they fail is you can see the string comparison over here. Okay, e dot to string. However, I'm get uh yeah, exactly you can see there's a serial number over here, right? Okay, let me just copy the whole thing and then we can see more clearly back in the editor. Double click to and right click to copy that and say okay. And and you can paste it over here. So now notice uh, what's happening over here. We have the uh, square brackets over here, right? With uh, enclosing the serial number, followed by this entire string is exactly equal to this string over here, exactly equal to, because when we call e dot to string, right? What it's going to do is it's going to call the version of the to string method in the entry class, which in turn will call the to string method from the product class over here, right? It's more like a, and then the value will be concatenated to the uh, string uh, string brackets enclosed uh, serial number. And the product class uh, to string method is defined uh, elsewhere over here, right? Okay, again, you, can, you should really uh, notice, uh, you should really understand that this part is really the result of calling e.getProducts.toString. All right, that's really the main point I'm trying to carry uh, forward. And now if we want, let me just do a little bit change over here. Let's say I'm not quite happy with this string output over here because, well, first of all, let's make sure everything pass. If I do run here, everything passed, green bar, very good. But let's say I'm not very happy the fact that there's no space between the entire description over here and the brackets enclosed serial number here. At least I want to put a space in between. That looks nicer. I want to prettify it. What I can do is if I can simply say, let's say what I expect to happen is I want to have empty space, white space over here. But as soon as I do that, I will have a red bar. And if you double click on uh, the the the, uh, the top line, it's going to tell you that you uh, what's going to happen. The actual uh, we'll see exactly where the uh, difference is. Let's see if oh it's a little bit small, but okay, it's exactly here. Okay, you can see we're expecting a space over here, but somehow it does not exist over here. Okay, it's still showing you very uh, useful information. But in this case, we don't want to change the expected value. That's what we want to change into. So what we should do is we should really change the return value over here. But how do we change the return value? We want to change the definition for the corresponding accessor. So what we should do is let's now, should we now, question for you. In order for this test, uh, that, uh, this test to pass, should we go back to the to string method of the entry class well, should we go back to the to string method of the product class? We should go back to the entry class because the entry class is going to tell us that we're going to combine the to string uh, return value of the products concatenated with a space and concatenated with this uh, serial number. So we should really go there to add a space. All right, not the product. Let's now go back to the entry class over here. So what we should do is, well, you can simply say add and then a space over here. Okay, that will do. Let's go back to test entry over here, and then I will simply say run. So now everything runs and everything passes. All right. So that's about the uh, first test case I want to go over in detail with you. And let's now do the second test.